So long story short, I, I put a hodgepodge of jobs together, saved up as much money as I could, and I tried to buy that first house. See, when you get out of college, you think that you're going to buy a $300,000 house. It doesn't work out that way. Reality sets in, right? So you save as much money as you can, and I did get to buy my first house. The problem is, is it's a shack. And when I say it's a shack, it's an 800-square-foot slab home with a little port cord off to the side. You know what was wrong with this house? Everything. Everything needed to be fixed on this house. So I'm working on this house like crazy, and then all of a sudden I met some amazing guy. He was my neighbor who lived right behind me. His name was Mike. Now, Mike was really cool. He was a retired guy, uh, handy with everything, and he wanted to help me fix up my house. And I thought it was because he cared about me. No, it's because the shack that he was living next to him, him was bringing down his property value. So he wanted to help me out in order to clean up the neighborhood, which is really, really nice of him. Now, it wasn't like my neighbor had like this line where he mows on this side and I mow on that side. That's not realistic. We just cleaned up the entire neighborhood and the entire area trying to do the best that we could. And he taught me about J-traps and electrical and, and everything else. He cared about me so much that he snowblowed my driveway for me every time it snowed. He had back problems, so he liked to uh, snowblow at 2.30 in the morning, ironically. <laughs> he would always take the snowblower auger and shoot it at my bedroom window or at my front door to build up a pile just to let me know that he was there and that he cared. <laughs> he was a good guy. He really was. So as I'm working on this house, kind of starting my career, I'm driving through this small town called Donahue, Iowa. And they had this little sign on the corner of one of the houses, and it said, Puppies, $25. And I'm like, all right, got a house? You know, I need a dog. So I woke up, who sells a dog for $25? And I walk into the garage and I look at this pile of eight puppies and they were the ugliest creatures you could ever imagine. These things were mutts crossed with mutts crossed with mutts and for 10 years we tried to play a little game of what type of dog that I had actually bought at the time. And since I care about my neighbor and since he had become my best friend, I decided to name my dog after my neighbor. So I named my dog Mike. <laughs> oh, you know where this is going, right? Every time he messed with me, I was going to mess with him right back. So what happened is, is my neighbor Mike and my dog Mike soon became friends, and I found out that my neighbor Mike was slipping little uh, hot dogs to my dog Mike, trying to steal them away from me. I'm like, it's on, buddy, let's go. So what I do is I yell Mike, and I have one of those voices, and my kids are sitting behind you. I have one of those voices where when I yell it from like a mile and a half away, my kids can actually hear it, and they'll go, Dad's telling us to come home, right? It can cut through glass. It can go anywhere I want to. So what would happen is when I would yell Mike, my dog would come running back, and my neighbor would all of a sudden jump. So I'd say, Mike! And my neighbor would, what? What? And he'd all of a sudden he'd turn around back at me like who had actually yelled at him, right? He had worked for 35 years as a drywaller, and uh, after 35 years of carrying drywall, his back got stiff. So he would, he, he would uh, go to the chiropractor three times a week just to get everything to loosen up. So then all of a sudden, I'd yell, Mike! And he'd go, oh, what's going on, buddy? What's going on, buddy? After a while of all this funny story, I only did it a couple times with him because I didn't want to hurt him or my dog. My dog got older, had hip dysplasia, and had a little gray beard. Now, one time I yelled, Mike! And I yelled it really, really fast, just to mess with him. I yelled, Mike! And my neighbor goes, and turns, and all you hear is crack, 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 pop. With me so far? And my dog falls over. And I'm sitting there like, oh, 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 what happened? Right? Had a couple of rough days, and Mike, my neighbor, no one really knows where he was from because he worked all over North America, right? So he had an accent from like Minnesota, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Pennsylvania all combined. So Mike, my neighbor, walks up to me because I'm having a sad period of time in my life, and he walks up and he goes, I'm going to get this straight. I'm going to get this straight. You're a funny man. Like, you're a funny man. You're, you're a funny man. So you get a dog and you name it after your neighbor. You know what I mean? You name it after your neighbor because you're a funny man. Then you yell, Mike, you fix your neighbor's back and your dog falls over and has a heart attack. Now that's a country music song. You're... <laughs> he, he was just, he was so funny. He was so much fun. Well, let's, uh, let's set into reality. A number of years go by, and uh, I have a blended family. My wife has three kids, and I have three kids. Put us together, we have six kids, and yes, we own them all, right? So the kids get along together, everyone gets along together great, and all my friends call me Mike after the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Seems like karma kind of came back to bite me on that one, don't you think? So I moved to a new town in a new era. 
you know, buy a bigger house. So all my neighbors are great and awesome. All of them are, are, are exceptional, except for one. Let's, let's call that one Sarah, all right? Her name's Sarah. You, you know, everyone's got a neighbor named Sarah, you know what I mean? Everyone's great, but Sarah. So we've been there four or five days, and this lady comes up to me, and she's like, hi, I'm Sarah Johnson. Good to meet you. Are you Mr. Hammerlink? And I said, my name's Sean Hammerlink. Yeah, you can call me Sean. How are you doing, ma'am? She's like, I'm your neighbor. I'm like, okay, then that makes me your neighbor. That, that's great. Do you have any questions or anything I can help you out with? And she said, I've read so much about you. I've read, you are a busy guy. You're a busy person. Busy, 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 aren't you? Doing all kinds of things. And I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I am. And she goes, then you got kids. How many kids do you have? One, two, three, four. That one keeps moving. That one keeps, ma'am, I have six kids. It's, we, we can handle this. So she says to me, you know, kids are difficult. They take a lot of time. Six kids, you know that you have to spend a lot of time taking care of them. Ma'am, I got six kids. I, I know how much time that they actually take in raising them, right? And then you always know the next question that's going to come. You always know what they're going to say, because they do it to me all the time. Sarah Johnson's of the world can't help themselves in this situation. And she says to me, how do you do it? Okay, how do I do what? How do you do it? How do you do it with six kids? How do you manage it? So me, with a quick comeback, I go ahead and say, well, it's pretty easy. Uh, I only have four seatbelts that work, so I take two of the kids and I bungee strap them behind the wheel well in the back of the minivan. Normally, I only feed the two I like, and I tell the other four to pick up off the table scraps before the dog actually gets in and it falls off the floor. <laughs> she looks at me and goes, you have a dog too? <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you taking this? Come on. Like, okay, uh, I know you. I got to get back to my family now. It's Sunday afternoon, family time, right? Now, the thing about Sarah, Miss Sarah Johnson is I didn't realize this, but she is the neighborhood watch captain. And by neighborhood watch captain, she doesn't understand that it's a voluntary service. She takes it as a full-time job, and she believes that she's also the social etiquette police, the cultural norm standard evaluator, you know, the, the, the family coverage concept, you know what I mean? And she's got to evaluate all things at all times. Now, normally I don't pay attention to this stuff, but after a while, you know, you're kind of getting into my pond here a little bit. You know what I mean? Kind of mess around with my pond. Can you believe the neighbors? They are so busy. They are so busy. Do you know where she's posting it? I'm not supposed to say it, but it begins with F and ends with Facebook, right? She's posting about my kid. The kids are so busy. They have so much energy. They're just running around like, and they're not wearing shirts. They're not wearing shirts. Those kids are so dark. They're, he's probably not even putting sunscreen on them. We're hammerlings. We burn once in the spring and we're copper the rest of the year. That's just how it works out. Come on. These kids, they're riding their bikes in the street. Yeah, they're riding their bikes in the street. I live on a cul-de-sac. If you drive too fast around my cul-de-sac, you have to deal with my wife and I. Come on, let's be realistic. These kids, they're not wearing helmets when they're riding their bikes. Yeah, that's kind of true. You got me on that one. <laughs> These kids, they're drinking out of the garden hose, the garden hose. Well, at least they're smart enough to let the hot water run out before they spray each other in the face. Come on, leave me alone. So I'm like, it's on. You're messing around in my pond. Now let's have the conversation. Next day, the kids, they're playing around in the garden hose. So I go ahead and run outside and make as much noise as humanly possible. And I say, boys, boys, daddy didn't have enough money to pay the water bill last month. Didn't have enough money and you're wasting water out of the garden hose spraying each other. I told you to turn off the water until daddy gets paid next Friday. Now what I need you to do is drink the clean water out of the back of the toilet tank. Right, the back. Not the dirty water in the front and don't flush it. Don't flush it. I don't get paid till next week. So you clean it out of the back and you can drink that. My kids are so amazing. They're so amazing. One of my sons didn't even miss it. He goes, well, Daddy, you know, we, do we still have to share the same cup in the kids' bathroom, or can we use your cup in your bathroom and your toilet water, too? <laughs> the neighbor's going, oh, blessed. Oh, blessed. Oh, not even 15 minutes later. Thank God for children's social services. Is someone going to go ahead and report this guy? Oh, it's on. It's on. You want to know how it's on? Hadn't had a dog since Mike. Three days later, got one. Guess what we named her? <laughs> Sarah. My kids call Sarah my neighbor the rubber arm bandit. You wonder why? Because she likes to point every time I yell Sarah. Sarah! 
She gets high up on her heels, on her heels, and she just points at me. My neighbor does. She points at me. When I make her really mad, she points with both fingers. Sarah. <laughs> right? So finally, Sarah started to get the hint. Don't mess around in my pond. I won't mess around in your pond. Now, her pond is social media. I'm not joining your pond. I have free will and free rights. I don't have to get involved with your pond. I'm going to stay over here in my pond. So let's all of a sudden assume it's a couple months later and it's winter in Iowa. So all of a sudden I go to this event in DeWitt at the community center. I'm walking in. This guy walks up to me and he goes, hey, Hammerlink, how's the family? Doing all right. How are you doing? Doing all right. Hey, is everyone healthy back home? Yeah. Why are you asking? I heard that your kids had the sickness. The sickness? I mean, what did you say? He said, yeah, the sickness. Where did you hear that? Oh, Sarah Johnson posted it on Facebook that your family had the sickness. I haven't heard someone say the sickness since I was with my grandpa watching old Lone Ranger videos where he's like, yes, Tonto, the grave robber has the sickness now. Who says the sickness? My kids had the flu, all right? When the flu enters one of these small towns in Iowa, everyone gets the flu. You know that? All you're doing is waiting for your turn. I don't care if you get the flu shot or not. You're just trying to make it less horrible. Now, if you have six kids, you want to pray to God that all six kids call dinosaurs and get sick at the exact same time. Wonder why? You can get it over within a week. But that's not how God invented this world. Nope, 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 nope. One gets it, calls dinosaurs, right? All of a sudden, starts to get better. The next one gets it. Then the next one gets it. By the time you get through all six kids, my wife and I, it's a rock solid month and a half. You know why my kids get sick? I work at adult daycare. Do you get that? I'm not talking about the community college. I'm talking about politicians. I will take my first grade son's class hy hygienic skills above any politician any day. Hey, you, how's it going? Hey, you, how's it going? Hey, you, I'm a, I'm a politician. How's it going? I'll give you this little bet. Go to the state capitol the first week in February. It's influenza A crossbreeding with influenza B mutating. And if you want to get out of there alive, you're going to need a hazmat suit and two bottles of Lysol. <laughs> <laughs> reality. I bring it back home and my kids get it. So I come home and I tell my wife what's going on and she goes, ah oh, man, I can't believe it. And I said, I know, I know. Miss Johnson, can you believe what she's doing? Talking about us on the F Facebook. You know what I'm talking about? And she goes, no, I'm just worried about what you're going to do next. <laughs> Light bulb goes off. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get another dog. And I'm going to teach it that no means yes and yes means no. And I'm going to name it Johnson. And then I'm going to let both dogs out the back door every day, and I'm going to say, Sarah, Johnson, don't poop in the neighbor's yard. Don't do it. It's on. You want war. We'll create war. You're in my pond now. So let's fast forward. Sarah Johnson's world is that everything has to be correct according to however she sees it. Everything has to be according to the framework that she sees it. And anyone that violates that framework or that norm is in violation. I do work in politics. Some of my best friends are not of the same political party that I am. You want to know why? I talk to them. They say, Sean, I don't agree with you. Why? They tell me. I look at them and I say, I don't agree with you. They ask why. And I tell them, do you know what we do after that? We go out for dinner. It's no big deal. We go out for dinner. But however, you have these Democrats over here. In order to be a really, really good Democrat, you can only believe these things. In order to be a really good Republican, you have to believe only these things. What happens if I don't agree with you? Well, then you're not good enough to be in our pond. Okay, deal. I don't have to actually join in with you. The actual true abuse that's occurred recent, recently is I'd call it adult on adult abuse in social media, and I'd like to call them sports fans. Now, I'll give you a quick little recap. So I got, uh, I got this buddy, he gave me a call. He's like, hey, or he was texting me. He's like, hey, Sean, do you want to, uh, you want to go to the Packers game this weekend? I'm like, no. He's like, oh, you must be busy. You got a ton of stuff going on. No, I just don't want to go to the Packers game. Well, I thought you were a Packers fan. I just don't want to go to the game. Why? Sometimes it's colder at Lambeau Field than it is in Fairbanks, Alaska. I don't know why you guys do this, Packers fans, but you stand up for four straight hours in negative 17 degree weather and put cheese on your head. No. Do you know what God did? He gave me a flat screen TV in my heated living room. I'll be just fine. You're not a real Packers fan. Do you know the really, really bad group? The really, really bad group? Cubs fans. Cubs fans actually have a purity, like a purity scale, like how much of a Cubs fan are you? 
You know what I mean? Are you just a bandwagon Cubs fan? Tell you what, 37 years old, I spent the last 36 years waiting for opening day. You wanna know why? Because when the Cubs actually won, I got to say that they were in first place of the pennant. Right? I was there, my grandfather, 92, got buried in a Chicago Cubs baseball cap. Now he's a real champion. If you actually thought at the end of game three, after game three, when the Cubs were down three to zero, that the Cubs were gonna make a miraculous comeback, have a rain delay, right? And have extended innings, and you actually thought that's how the world was gonna work. I tell you what, I got six unicorns to sell you. One of them you can only see every 50 years for 10 seconds, so the bidding starts over here. I mean, come on, the world isn't exactly as, as concrete. People don't have to fulfill and sit in these perfect little spots of your designed expectations. Now here's the problem. The internet gives that world and those people the framework where they can set parameters, as if they're ethnocentric, as if we need to bring back eugenics, the eugenics programs of the 1920s of who are actually the purest of the pure. It's completely irrational and unreasonable. Go home to your pond and fix it. Fix your relationship first. Don't do it on the internet. Don't complain to other friends. Go home and fix your pond. If you have a problem with work, go to your work and fix your pond. If you have a problem with children, come on over. We're an encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep you guys busy. In all this reality, I just want to tell you that social media is also your pond. Now, you have a choice in life, all right? You have a choice in life. Do you want to jump in that pond or not? And what do you put in your pond? If you get a request or an invitation, if you get an invitation from Sarah's Johnson to join your pond, I want you to push delete. Real quick. I don't care if you hurt Sarah Johnson's feelings or not, just push delete. And if you find yourself in life with a pond full of Sarah Johnson's, say Sean Hamlin told me to do this and go delete, 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 and just delete them all. Clean up your pond and you'll realize that life can actually be fun when you fill it with uh, neighbors like Mike. It's been a complete pleasure.